Welcome back to Top 5 Auto Repairs. How do you know you got a bad timing belt? The first most common sign is going to be no starts. So you, if you have an interference engine and the timing belt breaks, it's going to cause the intake and exhaust valves to collide with the piston and that's going to cause a low compression. When you have very low compression caused by a broken timing belt, even if you start with a brand new timing belt and with a timing kit with new tensioner and all of that, there's a good chance that your engine may start, but it's going to run extremely horrible. And that's when you know your valves are pretty much uh, bent and it's time for replacement. The next common sign that you know that it's time to change your timing belt and it's going to go bad and fail is going to be jumping timing. So basically your timing uh, system consists of the timing belt, consists of a hydraulic tensioner or it could be also be spring-loaded tensioner. It's going to consist with an idler and it's going to come with a, a tensioner a pulley. So basically this part, the tensioner over here, is going to apply uh, pressure on this tensioner pulley right here, which is going to press against this timing belt and keep the uh, timing belt in place. When your timing belt jumped out of time, it's going to cause low power. So basically the timing will be out of sync and the, and the uh, valves, the intake and exhaust valve will open and close at the proper time and the spark plugs will be firing at the wrong time. All that will be contributing to a low power. So when you're driving, it feels like you really got no power and you try to accelerate and you can't go faster on the highway or you can't pick up speed. There's a good chance that your timing probably jumped by a tooth or maybe a few teeth. You're probably wondering what can cause the uh, timing belt to jump a few teeth. The most common problem is going to be a bad timing tensioner. So basically this tensioner should be able to apply enough tension against this uh, belt right here. And if there's not enough tension, it's going to cause the timing to jump, especially under load. To check if you got a good timing tensioner or not, all you really need is a C-clamp or um, a vise. So all you have to do is just put it on this over here and squeeze it. And so, be, so a good timing tensioner you should be able, there should be a, a lot of tension when you're trying to, uh, to squeeze it. And it should be able to go in smoothly. As you can see here, this timing tensioner seems to be okay. So when this timing belt over here snapped, most likely it wasn't caused by this tensioner. And if the tension is not a problem, it's probably caused by a bad um, pulley. It could either be an idler pulley, a tensioner pulley, or sometimes even a water pump if, it's a, if the water pump is driven by the timing belt. As you can see, next I'm gonna check the, uh, the pulleys. So basically this is the idler pulley over here and you wanna spin it. When you're spinning it, it should be nice and quiet. So let's see if this is quiet. If you can hear it, it's pretty rough. It sounds pretty, pretty rough. So you want to take this right here and you kind of want to hold the center part over here and kind of like wiggle this at the side, make sure there are no play. Because if there's excessive play, that can cause the uh, timing belt to fall out of place and jump a few teeth. Next, I'm going to check the, uh, the tensioner pulley. Again, same procedure. All you got to do is spin it. And this one's a little bit, kind of a little bit squeaky. But it's not as bad as this idler pulley, which is kind of noisy. See, this one's a lot more noisy. So I wouldn't say this is a problem right here. It probably just needs slight lubrication. But other than that, this one sounds a lot better. So next, you want to visually inspect the uh, timing belt. So basically, even, let's just say all these components are good. The pulleys are good. The tensioner is good. The water pump is good. And so on. You could just have a, a belt that's completely worn and maybe it's time for replacement. On some vehicle, on the uh, timing cover, there's going to be a little hole that's going to have this little rubber grommet on it. You can remove that rubber grommet and you can shine a flashlight through that hole and visually inspect the uh, timing belt condition. So checking the timing belt is extremely easy. You just want to make sure it's in good condition and you want to make sure that none of these teeth are missing. You want to make sure that the, the belt is not cracked. You want to make sure that you don't have pieces missing all around the um, belt. You want to visually inspect the uh, sides right here. If it looks like it's these little fibers right here are coming apart, 
it is time to uh, replace it. Since you can visually see the timing belt through that little peephole, or you can just remove the top timing cover, what do you want to do? You want to grab onto the timing belt and kind of pull it a little bit. There should be extremely strong, strong uh, tension on it. And it feels like you can really pull on it. That means there's not much tension left and you better change that belt along with new tensioner and everything else in that timing kit. And lastly, if you have an uh, unexplained uh, engine misfire, for example, let's just say you change the spark plug, the ignition coil, the fuel directors are working properly. Maybe you have low compression that's causing misfire, again, caused by jumped timing. As always, thank you for watching. Subscribe to Top 5 Auto Repairs.